Mobile Schools. It's the expedition episode brought to you by Infinite Inquiry Incorporated. It's another Teacher Way Today presentation. Long way. Long way at the ground for it. That's crazy. Oh my god. Holy crap! Oh, the slippery. Oh my god. Meals, meals. That's just way too crazy. You need the six more. Alright. Oh wow. Oh yes. Oh crap, we're gonna swim in this. Yep. Oh my god. It's a what it's a and a whole bunch of sweat. That's gonna we just got done swimming out of this freaking pool. At a time when road travel was risky business for people of color, Gramps was the original gangsta. It was America's bicentennial, and Gramps mistakenly thought that he was dying from complications to diabetes. And with his brand new splurge of a purchase in this big RV in 1976, one of his first trips was coming to see his brand new granddaughter. And there I am hanging out with my favorite guy in the world. Growing up in that RV during the summers with Gramps and the family on those long trips, I learned an appreciation for expedition and also for the Dwight Eisenhower interstate system, which connected all parts of the continental United States for the average American. Our family trips with Poppy and my uncle Grant. We were a group of all ages and were able to learn the same thing, yet many different things at the same time. That gave way to the professional practice that I engage in as an expeditionary educator, which I'll share with you through the rest of this vlog. As I would imagine is true for most people, there was something very liberating about travel for my grandfather, as is the case with myself. Here is Niagara Falls in 1976, where our Ralston ancestors um, call home on the Canadian side. It was only by coincidence that LGE Coachworks, the builders of my mobile school, are located in Erie, Pennsylvania. It was a connecting flight to Erie and a direct flight to Buffalo, so Buffalo was the easy choice. We took a night flight after a, a long day of work on Thursday in the ATL and headed to Buffalo that evening to do business on Friday. Talk about a free bird. My oh my, to be in the same place that my grandfather was in 44 years prior was breathtaking within itself. But to be there with my husband and to be working on the plan that was going to take me into professional liberty and the autonomy that I needed with a mobile space, 
I just couldn't explain how exciting it was that day. It was overwhelming to be in the same spiritual space of what was once a major stop on the Underground Railroad. It, I used it as a recon mission, though, uh, for one of the state parks, one of the first state parks that we might travel to in, in the mobile school. If older pupils are the majority of your student body, as you plan expedition, consider not focusing on one park at a time, but more on a regional study. For example, this was the Land of Lincoln trip, which began in Lincoln's birth home and continued to Springfield, where we were able to see the capital of, of Illinois, and then onward to Chicago, where we studied Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture. There is no question as to whether or not state and national historic places and parks will relate to American curriculum. There is no doubt. The question for you or the dilemma will be whether or not there is ample RV and bus parking. A safe bet would be yes. Majority of the national parks have RV and bus parking and the state parks as well. This adorable group of pupils is the primary cohort that I used for videography, still photography, and audio recordings uh, in order to share replicable experiences with my colleagues. Today, all of them are well above the age of 21, which is why I do so freely. I identify and somewhat embody Chiron, the eldest and wisest of the wild centaurs, Chiron metaphorically representing Molly and the wild centaurs representing those wild, crazy kids that I absolutely can't live without. My old Gramps was definitely an, an adventurer in every sense of that term. And as you can tell, I didn't fall far from that tree. And as you travel, make it a habit to document the distance traveled, the speed traveled. Use that later in, in your uh, academic calendar for graphing and finding out your maximums and averages and minimums, which are all useful things to curriculum in American schools. How many footsteps is it to the local park, to the local grocery store, to the local library? All of that data, if it's done weekly, you know, amounts to 36 weeks of data that you all can use for a statistical study. Got a kid that's great with his hands? Consider some old engine that maybe he can tinker with. What novelty can you engage in with the children? <laughs> a right-hand drive Mini, 1976 Mini Cooper. <laughs> How does train travel change the ball game? How does it compare to road travel, foot travel? How does it compare to cycle, to boat? All of these things are, are great for comparison and contrast. And then we must, we must discuss the, the value of shared experience. And traveling by small group with people who uh, trust and have confidence in each other, who build multi-year relationships with one another, what does that do for the self-esteem of the children that are in your charge? So when we traveled in that, uh, that 15 passenger black van that you saw on the last slide, you'll notice that my students were, were, were working in that vehicle. They didn't have the luxury of space that they'll have in this vehicle, but essentially we had to have two different facilities, one mobile and one brick and mortar. Oh Lord, I'm scared to look down. Just do it. <laughs> My God, this Are you, is so oh, scary. Are you crying? This is so beautiful. And why are you so afraid to look down? Spell beautiful, Javis. Uh. Perf. It's Birdzilla. No <gasps> daddy. On this vlog journey, I hope to demonstrate that. Over the decades of working as an expeditionary educator in a brick and mortar facility, that perhaps a mobile unit is the only way to do expedition well. 
As you engage with the local, regional, national, and international environments that you occupy, make sure to include an opportunity for occupations. Every child in your charge should be a statistician, an ecologist, a scientist in some form or another. Consider explorers, naturalists, people who journal, sketch artists, and so on. You name it. Returning to the mobile school from attractions, both local, regional, and national, the students will re-enter their mobile facility where the Chiron logo will be embossed on all the headrests. As well, there will be a Corian countertop for lunch preparation and a full bathroom for cleaning up and refreshing themselves. The bamboo, iron bamboo flooring will also be weather resistant for rain and snow. And this concept drawing gives us a little bit of an amended view of what we had in episode one. We've removed the automated desks as well as the automated recline feature for the students as it would be distraction and perhaps a safety issue while in movement. And E450, that's the full size of it. It's a 29 foot bus all the way to the back. there. Mine will be black. And with the black vehicle, we will logo the two left and right rear saddles, the rear door, and the front pilot and co-pilot doors. What a blessing it, it has been and continues to be to be able to share my experience and migration from a static facility to a mobile unit for expeditionary teaching and learning. I'll ask your continued support in liking, following, sharing, and subscribing. And for those of you with young students, early elementary age, please reach out. I'm enrolling eight for fall of 2021.